Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Starting off the news this week, SpaceX's SN9 Starship prototype launched yesterday with another high altitude test. The ship was supposed to launch to 10 kilometers and then cut engines and make a controlled descent using its flaps back down to the surface. And its engines would right itself and it would land again, right next to the next prototype of Starship. Some of the photos that have been taken of the two prototypes next to one another this week have looked really cool, so at least we had that. What we didn't have, however, was a successful landing and the craft crashed upon impact. This is a similar result to the SN8 test last month, but once again SpaceX praised the test flight for doing exactly what it was supposed to do, gather as much information about the craft as possible. That's it for now. To Ben. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news this week is an interesting paper that has found more evidence to support a much earlier appearance of the first flowering plants. Recent analyses looking at molecular clocks keep placing the origin of the flowering plants, the angiosperms, at a much earlier date than the oldest definite fossils of these organisms that appear in the Cretaceous. This new study, however, used a method of analysing the fossil record of these plants that deliberately took into account the incomplete sampling, discovering that their results also support a pre-Cretaceous origin, with several families seeming to originate in the Jurassic period. So, some fascinating research that adds to our changing understanding of how these incredibly important organisms came to be. And finally for this week is a study that has reanalyzed hominin teeth discovered in a cave in Jersey in the early 20th century, discovering that, although originally thought to be Neanderthal, they in fact likely came from Neanderthal-human hybrids. Thirteen teeth were originally recovered from this site, and dating of the locality indicates they're about 48,000 years old, meaning they're pretty young for Neanderthal remains. The paper describes how the teeth seem to represent two adult individuals and that the strange shape of them compared to other Neanderthal teeth indicate a shared ancestry with Homo sapiens in both of them. Additionally, the age of the specimens does coincide with the time in which both Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans were coexisting in Europe, suggesting that a previously unknown and unique population of Neanderthal-human hybrids were inhabiting this region at this time. So some fascinating news. Back to Doug in the studio. Thanks, Ben. I hope it's going well. And thank you for watching this week's Seven Days of Science. We'll see you next week.